What are the evidences that must play out in the life of a man who is baptized in the spirit? There are three major evidences. Three major evidences. Number one, anybody who is baptized in the Holy Spirit will speak in tongues. And I'm using my word carefully. I didn't say must speak in tongues. I say will speak in tongues. Because it's a function of your will. God won't force you. But if you understand the benefits, you will know you should speak in tongues. And I will deal with that question. If you read the Bible, most, almost 95% of the times that people are baptized in the Holy Spirit, they spoke in tongues. Acts chapter 2 verse 4. The disciples were baptized in the Holy Spirit and they spoke in tongues. Acts chapter 10 verse 46. Cornelius was baptized in the Holy Spirit and he spoke in tongues. Acts 19 verse 6. Paul met some disciples at Ephesus. He asked them, have you been baptized since you believed? They said, no. We have, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? They said, no. We have not as much as heard of any Holy Ghost. All we know is the baptism of John. And Paul said, no, there's more. After Paul taught them, the Bible said Paul laid his hands on them and they received the Holy Ghost and they prophesied and spake with tongues. So when people are baptized in the Holy Ghost, the first sign you see is that they speak in tongues. Some may not be immediately but eventually they will. In Acts chapter 9, when Ananias came and laid hands on Paul, the Bible didn't record that he spoke in tongues. However, in Acts, 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 18, Paul said, I thank my God, I speak in tongues more than all of you. Paul spoke in tongues more than the whole church. And this church is not a congregation, it's a state. I thank my God, no one that the man was a custodian of dangerous mysteries. I thank my God that I... Hey, you know, the first time I, I discovered that scripture, I, I was wondering, who is this? How many intercessors are in this church, number one? And then this is a church where people pride in speaking in tongues. So how, how does Paul pray in tongues? No wonder when he was talking to the church in Thessalonica, he said, pray without ceasing. So Paul prays without ceasing. If he's having his bath, karoma etaria faragata, liga bonda kibara kidosate. If he's walking, mandra kiba akto faragata, ragabadigi sonzo. If he's driving, well, chariot. If he's riding a horse, kombo kekekurua kakakata kalaga. Hey! And then somebody is arguing and saying, no. I, I mustn't speak in tongues. Really? You don't know the benefits. I thank my God. I speak in tongues more than ye all. The second sign of Holy Ghost baptism is power. If you stop at the level of speaking in tongues, you don't know what Holy Ghost baptism is. In Acts chapter 1 verse 8, Jesus said, not many days from now. He said, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. In Acts chapter 3 from verse 1 to 8, you see the apostles, they didn't stop with tongues. In Acts chapter 2 verse 4 to 10, they spoke in tongues, but they moved forward. In chapter 3, the Bible said Peter and John came to the temple at the hour of prayer. They saw an impotent man that begged them for help. And Peter looked at him and said, look on us. And he said the man was looking because what they would do on a normal day was to give money. So that's what the man was expecting. They had not grown into power yet, but they grew. And they said the man was expecting to receive something. And Peter says, silver and gold have I none. If you think it's what we have been giving you, I came here with today. Something has changed. Now power has come. He said, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And he said the man could not rise up. The guy knew he had power. He held him, pulled him up. And the man was limping and walking. And they kept pushing. And he began to glorify God. The Bible says strength came to his ankles. So don't stop with tongues. That's what I tell people every day. It's only Pharisees that stop with prayer. You now speak in tongues, you feel important. Oh God, the person with headache, the headache is there. The cancer is still there. Thank God for your tongues, but I need this pain to go. So don't pride yourself in tongues alone. You are, you are not a Pharisee that brags with prayer. But unfortunately, our generation stops at prayer. And we brag with prayer. When somebody finishes praying and his suit is wet, he will walk like a man of stature. He will walk like a man of stature and sit down and he will be acting as a spiritual man. He will look up. 
when you see Ghana people, sometimes you just marvel what demons tell them. Somebody is done praying, he will sit down and do like this. So that you will feel that Kai, something is happening. Hey, something, something. Meanwhile, if he was alone, he wouldn't do that. Oh. It's because he's church and he knows people are looking. An angel is whispering to him. Since there is so much power on your body that you want to explode, somebody has cancer here. Please transmit that power there. Don't deceive yourself, sir. Grow. The apostles didn't stop with acts of prayer. They scored acts of the apostles. They demonstrated power from place to place. So their tongue matured into power. So when you are done, Kampa, Reko, Pakasuzwa, Maragata, Sexigo, begin to experiment. Start with headache. When you migrate from headache, start with broken bones. Go to growth. Pick over people's circumstance. Start with issues of barrenness. By this time next year, you will carry a boy. Go and wait. When one year come, ask if the person doesn't come. What happened? Those are the things that should trouble you. Because you must move from tongues to power. When you pray for somebody, I have pain on the back. When you finish praying, he's going. Say, wait, come. Is the pain still there? If the pain is still there, pray again. Because the reason you charged yourself is not to feel good. It's to create power. It's to generate power. If the pain is there, pray again. The Bible said in Luke 4.14, he returned in the power of the Spirit. The disciples of Jesus, after they were baptized, power began to issue out. Silver and gold have I known. Such as I have, I give you. Rise up and walk. Paul the apostle, power issued out. Handkerchiefs and aprons were taken from the body of Paul. They were casting out demons. They laid them on the sick. They recovered. And then after power, you have the third evidence of, of, of baptism in the Holy Ghost, which is the character of the Spirit, the fruits of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is not the fruit of the Holy Ghost. It's the fruit of the recreated human spirit. The moment your spirit was recreated, love was installed, patience was installed, kindness was installed. The problem is that you may not be able to manifest it. So when the Holy Ghost comes, what the Holy Ghost helps you to do is to begin to stare those fruits until they start finding expression. So power and the fruits of the Spirit may not be instant. But if a man is genuinely baptized in the Spirit, over time, we shall see it. What are the ways of receiving the baptism of the Spirit? Number one is to ask God for it. Because like I told you, the Holy Ghost is already here. And it's a day that believe out of their belly shall flow. So you can be baptized in the Spirit in your bedroom. If you ask in faith, God will release him upon you. Many persons have been baptized by asking God, Lord, fill me with the Spirit. Baptize me with the Spirit. And as they kept praying in sincerity and in faith, it opened. Because they that believe out of their belly shall what? Flow rivers of living waters. Number two, how do you get baptized in the Spirit? By laying on of hands of those who carry the Spirit. Acts 19 verse 1 to 6, the disciples in Ephesus didn't know. After Paul preached to them, the Bible said he laid hands on them and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. How do you get baptized in the Spirit? Number three, by staying in an atmosphere where the Holy Ghost is moving. Acts 10, 44 to 46. As Peter was yet speaking, the Holy Ghost fell upon them. That's why some of you are in a meeting and then you burst into tongues. The hand of God comes heavy upon you because you are under that ambience and your spirit is open. How do you get baptized in the spirit? Number four, by obeying the word of God. Peter was speaking. He said the Holy Ghost is the gift God gives to them that obey him. So if you start obeying the ordinances of God and putting it to work, even asking, of course you know it's an act of obedience, the Holy Ghost comes upon you. These are four simple ways of receiving the baptism in the spirit. Very quickly, what are the benefits of baptism in the spirit? Number one, it brings you empowerment. Acts 1.8. Not many days from now, you shall receive the Holy Ghost and power. Acts 10.38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power. Every time that baptism takes place, power is released. Number two, what is the benefit of receiving the Holy Ghost? 
it equips you for service. For example, the gifts of the Spirit comes upon your life. There are many people who will not hear your gospel until you flow in word of knowledge. That's an enablement of the Spirit. There are many people who will not hear your gospel until they are healed of, of sickness. That's an enablement, supernatural enablement for service. That's why he said, don't move because you have read a book. He said, tarry in Jerusalem until you are endued with power. Luke 24, 49. Tarry until you are endued. Many persons have gone out of zeal and things went wrong with them because they didn't receive empowerment. Tarry. That's how the fathers of old did it. Moses went to Horeb and received power. Samuel received power. Every one of them received power. They went out with enablement. The Holy Ghost comes to enable you. Even Jesus received enablement. Number four, why is it important to be baptized in the Spirit? It opens you up to the whole ministry of the Holy Ghost. And I've taught you about the ministry of the Spirit before. Number one, there's a revelational ministry. When you are talking, you are talking from the wisdom of God. Number two, there's a transformational ministry of the Spirit. The reason we are changed is not just because we heard a good message. It's because while we are here in the Holy Ghost is walking on our inside. Moving us from one level of glory to another. Number three, there is the convicting ministry of the Holy Spirit. That flows through you when you are talking. The hearts of men are pricked. Not because you are shouting. Because there is a sting in your voice. When Peter finished, he said their hearts were pricked. And they say, men and brethren, what shall we do? So all the totality of the ministry of the Holy Spirit is activated in your life when you are baptized in the Holy Ghost. Finally, what is the benefit of receiving the baptism of the Spirit? It opens you up to speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues. And every believer must learn to speak in tongues and to speak in tongues often. Speak in tongues. Speak in tongues. What is speaking in tongues? It's a supernatural language or a spiritual language that the Holy Ghost enables you to speak. It's not a language you learn. It's not a language you copy. But you can master as you keep growing. In Acts 2.4, it said they spoke in tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. All of them received it the same day and they all started speaking the same day. Nobody went to a school to learn it. And nobody copied the other person. The Holy Ghost gave them utterance. And they began to speak in tongues. And the more you speak, the more the syllabus increases. Some of you, when you started speaking in tongues, you started by saying, Kama. Some people is koku. Koku. If you hear some tongues, you say, which, which, which part of the spirit realm is this person speaking from? Some people is kue, kue, kue. And you hear the kue, 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 kue. But it makes sense. In fact, when freshness of the spirit comes, those tongues become more powerful. But you see, if you continue giving yourself to it, after a while, you will see that new ones will start coming. The syllabus becomes more syllabus. Syllabus. Because you will need many syllabus for different expressions in different quarters. Hope you know that as you are seated here now, if you are invited to speak in BBC, you won't speak the way you speak with your friend. When you see your friend, you say, how far waiting they happen? Hungry, they catch me, I beg something there to chop. That's how you penetrate that place. If you go to BBC and you say, hey, waiting they happen, oh boy, they, oh, who is who is good? When you go to BBC, you have to enter another syllabus. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. I just want to address you very quickly. Uh, you need syllabus. You need syllabus. You need syllabus. As it works in the spirit. And let me tell you, when you start doing the business of priesthood, you will understand the place of utterance. Because one of the powers of a priest is the syllabus he has. Because that's a place of negotiation. That's a place of legislation. And sometimes, even in the spirit, you need syllabus to, to speak with archangels. You need syllabus to speak in the Holy of Holies. You need syllabus to negotiate certain things so that you obtain favor where it matters. So as you are growing, all trances will be coming. Those all trances is what will carry you to different levels of authority. It's not everywhere you do coca, coca, coca. In some places, you, you have to speak like one who has been there for a while. Manda kibara axtos. Feragadira angra paradostos. Atopa parani zadadiros. Ragagadira rakianta pantariga paragadosta. Ragagiros tonja la manda kira. Paragadabondra diga sadabate. Anta siga paras. Maragongre teligazaya. Astombre tilahura. Vagdavira paragadina. Sonzoria paragadosta. You know what? You know what? As you are
are negotiating you are negotiating a point comes the king now approves it and said that thing you are asking for is release now receive the liberty to go to war ah you will switch from mandaraki borakira parada now you are going to war you need to carry a heavy duty machine mama moata yeah yeah you are you are mama mata aveve bombo mbe umaza azizon gangarana tataduro mapapo papopo aruapo popo inatwata kapakuma azwata kipo hey ome kakora kakura zazanza zazanza aradadina tandala mambato zagavaya